year. We're going to start in the NFL because, listen, it's an end of an era. The Patriots and Bill Belichick are parting ways after 24 seasons. Belichick leaves New England as a six-time Super Bowl champion and arguably the best coach in NFL history. Guys, yesterday it was Pete Carroll, and then it was Nick Saban, and now we say goodbye to Bill Belichick in New England. Did this surprise you? I don't think it surprised me uh, that his tenure in New England is over, and we got to see what he does. I think he still has a want to coach, and there's mm. probably a team out there that would see him as a leader of his organization. But you look at the way the, the last handful of years have gone, really the last half decade uh, since Tom Brady left New England, it has not been great. I don't think that he's drafted great, and that's the GM side of Bill Belichick. And then uh, certainly at times it looked like competent defense, maybe the offense found a spark, but it was never anything consistent there. And so I think the most unfortunate part of this is some people are going to remember maybe the end of the tenure here. And uh, I think it can be unfair in some ways. I also think this was a move that needed to happen for the Patriots organization to move forward. But you talk about the uh, championship pedigree there. And I think really uh, you can see his fingerprints on a lot of the game, not only in the NFL, but in the college space as well, as well, where people would go to camp and they would watch what he did and how he operated yeah. and try to put it into their own organizations or programs. There's only one guy who could put it off the way he did. Yeah, like you said, though, there's going to be a lot of question marks about his entire tenure because of the way that it ended. When you think about it, he hasn't been much without Tom Brady, right? right? And so it's hard. It's hard to be a great coach without a quarterback. And with Tom Brady, I think that a lot of what Bill Belichick wanted to do with programs was being masked, right? Because Tom Brady would take less money, right? He would be the first one to adhere to all the different rules, whether it's good or bad. He adhe he adhered to the authority of uh, Bill Belichick. And so it gave him a lot of freedom to do things, make mistakes, right. and then they'll be covered up. But now Tom Brady's gone. Those mistakes are glaring, especially, you know, bringing in a defensive coordinator, making him the offensive coordinator for a young quarterback. Right. That's just something that you wouldn't do. But if you have Tom Brady, those things can kind of be masked. Well, I think there's a question people are asking, too, about the, the Patriot way. And it was one of the things I was alluding to, where people tried to do that mm -hmm. uh, everywhere. And even when I was at Ohio State, we used to have the signs up yeah. in the, the, um, the training room where it says, you know, availability is the best ability. Mm -hmm. You kind of run a tough program. You have people fall in line. And I think the younger athlete uh, likes a little bit more freedom. And they also, they, they like being assured 100%. that they're doing a, a good job. And yeah. I'm not exactly sure as good of a coach as Bill Belichick was that he was the first guy to he be out there. He wasn't the gold star guy. Right. Not the, you know, the, he's not putting B pluses on the, on the refrigerator. Exactly. Yeah. And so I, I think there is a shift that's happened. And we talked yeah. about it with Nick Saban as well, where he had to compromise right. on who he was as a coach. Some of these older dudes are like, the game is passing me by a yeah. little bit, and yeah. maybe I need new scenery or just to step away completely. Well, you know, they do have that old school mentality, the Patriots way, and you mentioned that the NFL and college football, they're adapting to a new style of coaching here. But, you know, we were you had a full screen up here. He's 15 wins short of Don Shula for the most wins of all time. He so he's not retiring, he or at least he didn't announce <laughs> that he's retiring. So his time in the NFL as a head coach, it might not be over yet. And we know there's a lot of openings across the NFL here. So where do you think could be a good fit if you were to continue with another team I'm thinking of a spot that has a, a veteran quarterback in place mm -hmm. that feels like the Chargers uh, just because of what they are now they they have a cap situation that is in hell mm -hmm. so they've got to get that sorted out and figure out who they can really pay and who they can bring back but the idea of him working with a veteran quarterback some talent already in place I think that he could step into that situation and do well I think some of the teams that are rebuilding maybe with younger quarterbacks that are unproven it might be a little more of what we saw toward the end of his tenure there in uh, New England yeah I think the Chargers are a good example of where he needs to go because the thing is He's, it's been proven that he needs a really good quarterback. And so I think it's an opportunity for him to prove something and Herbert as well because right. I have my doubts about what he is. Is he just the stat pattern? Is he the guy that's going to have a bunch of stats with nothing mm -hmm. to show for it? And so you get a great coach. You can't say this organization is inept any longer. Mm -hmm. You have Bill Belichick who knows winning. He knows how to build a program. And so you got this talented quarterback. They both can prove something if they get together. Yeah, and you know, Brady, he found that success going down to the Bucks there. And so I think people are hungry to see Bill okay. Belichick in that success with another team there getting back to his old ways but uh, what do we want to yeah, just the, the Chargers thing is really interesting I just want to uh, point this out here because people have connected Jim Harbaugh to that job as well yeah. and I think one thing that both of those guys would want is control over the organization Autonomy. 
Right, and more than just the, the coaching aspect of mm -hmm. it. And I don't know if the Chargers are the team that's willing to go all in, the organization that would be But they known. should, though. But they should. They should a relinquish like a lot because they've been a bad organization. Right? And, and that's, that's the conundrum that they're mm -hmm. in because if you want to get one of these really good coaches with a proven track record, you're going to have to give up a little bit yep. more as an organization. They have not shown the willingness to do that historically. That's going to be the interesting thing as we follow some of these veteran coaches around. Well, listen, as we you know, raise the questions on where Bill Belichick could go if he can continues to be a head coach in the NFL, but then it, there's also the question of who is going to replace him mm -hmm. because they have very big shoes to fill up there at Foxborough, and that's today's question. Who should replace Bill Belichick? Scan the QR code or go to playtherally.com. Now there's linebacker coach Gerard Mayo. Mm -hmm. They're saying that he is the like, likely candidate. You uh, see Mike Vrabel sure. recently fired there from Tennessee Titans. So who do you think would be a good fit? I mean, Mike Vrabel uh, has been an NFL coach for some years now, won a coach of the year, uh, I believe, in 2019. So we know that he's a good coach. He's somebody that came up in Bill Belichick's tree, he played for him for a very long time, had a lot of success as a Super Bowl champ there in New England. He's a, a Hall of Famer for that organization. He's somebody who I think the ownership would be very comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I have a personal relationship with him because he coached me uh, for a couple years at Ohio State. The guy's got high standards, but players love him because he understands what it means to be a player, played in the league forever. Um, that's the guy that I would go after. I know a lot of teams are going to be in on Mike Rabel. I think Mayo is a big yeah. get. And, and, and so many teams so often, they have the guy and they just make the mistake. They go somewhere else. Right. And they try to find it outside the building. Of Raiders course, might do it. They probably are, and it's not going to be good. <laughs> but the players love Mayo. He's put his time in, and he's kind of like the coach in waiting. And I think he has a great opportunity to prove that he's a really good head coach. I think he's the guy. And I think the idea of bringing in a former player mm -hmm. is something that intrigues me. Mm -hmm. Coming from Bill Belichick, who kind of was, you know, he, he was the guy, but he was the coachy coach guy. Mm -hmm. And now you have somebody who's maybe even a little bit more relatable because they sat there in that same meeting of course, room of course. with you. I, I think that's a, a really good way for them to go as well. And one name that's up there that we haven't talked about, Jim Harbaugh. You can't forget about him, that he could possibly be in the mix when it comes to some of these coaching Why do you keep trying to take our coach, man? I'm sorry. I just he's got to bring it up because he, he is. Because he's a good coach. <laughs> he is. That's, that's what happens. He's a really good when coach. You and that's a compliment, Dan. Yeah. Take it as a compliment. Yeah. All right, scan the QR code. Go to playtherally.com. Let us know your thoughts. We'll circle back.